What is up, everybody? Welcome back to The Outpost. It is me, Jello, and I'm coming at you guys with the deck that I'm looking forward to the most out of the Z01. It is Faded One of Unparalleled Varga Dragress. And, yep, yeah, this is probably, like, my, I don't, my nth time recording this video, because each time that I made it before, it just didn't feel like I was able to explain points well enough. So, let's hope that this is the last time that I have to record this so i can post it up so let's get straight into it we already know what the starter is so let's get straight into the grade one it is blaze ember dragon imbue the bottomless fighting spirit into the blade so obviously there's a giant sword on his back and that is the blade that you imbue your bottomless fighting spirit into and its first ability is when it is rode upon by boulder axe dragon the grade two of the ride line you call it to rear and you soul charge one it is a better in road shooter just plain and simple i've been playing a lot of flagberg lately so a lot of the analysis that i'm going to be making is going to be sort of in comparison <laughs> to that um just because of recency bias but anyway second ability is from rear during your turn if you have a grade three or greater vanguard with varga in its card name this gets plus 2k so it isn't 10k right from grade two ride like in road shooter is um, but it does still have that 10k power and usually you just want this in the back to have as a 10k booster or in the front as a free 10k body basically but yeah that is it for blaze ember dragon blaze ember dragon next we have boulder axe dragon don't think you can live think of death and give it all you've got pretty hardcore uh but yeah first ability is when it is rode upon by varga you may call it to rear guard circle so just another pop out it is again i feel like a lot better than ascendance assault that requires a soul blast or for you to reveal cards from your hand to be able to call and this is just a straight up call from the soul its longevity is subjective to what else you have on your field but its second ability is really really good i'm surprised that they didn't make this a single r for its ability the second ability is when this unit attacks a vanguard if you have a grade three or greater vanguard with varga in its card name this unit gets 5k until the end of that battle then at the end of the battle you retire it and you draw a card that effect is mandatory so not nothing you can do about it but you do get a 15k body swing and draw that is i think really good especially for a common especially for a grade two ride line piece and definitely a four of in varga starting out at least until we get more cards that do things on retire but again, it, it is costless. Um, it does retire itself, but as we get into Varga Dragress's ability, we'll see that this doesn't matter very much. But yeah, it's a really, really, really good piece for the deck. All right, and we have the dragon itself. This is Faded One of Unparalleled Varga Dragress. Until reaching the peak of Unparalleled, there is no end to my quest that pretty much sums it up the quest to be unparalleled you're always either fighting people to get to the top or you are fending people off to keep your spot at the top it is never ending and that's it for the flavor text look let's get into the abilities first ability is once per turn when this unit attacks a vanguard counter blast one retire all of your and your opponent's front row rear guards and this unit gets plus 10k until end of turn at the end of that battle stand this unit and it gets minus two drive until end of turn so the first thing that people were talking about the most important thing in terms of timing for this ability is that you don't get maximum value off of proccing drag veda with this skill obviously you want to be able to get a third attack out without having to rely on your divine skill proccing but with the timing of this ability you have to set up that three stand on attack so unless there's a way for us to know what's on the top of our deck which i don't think that we're going to get dragon empire and we don't get very many cards that let us look at that let alone put it back 
from top usually we get to look at a card and then it goes somewhere else but that is one of the biggest mental stresses i feel of this deck if you are trying to maximize the number of attacks that you can get you have to be able to know on attack whether or not you'll be able to hit that drag veda if you don't then you can restand with drag veda but you also lose that extra vanguard attack that you could have gotten if you had held the counter blast ability but again like at worst you're looking at a retire two and that's not bad, but in a lot of matchups, I don't know how everyone else's mileage has gone, but I have played ex almost exclusively against Lyrical Monasterio, and they almost never have anything left on their field to do anything with, so this doesn't feel great in a lot of matchups if you hit the Drag Veda, but if you don't, which most of the time you will not be hitting the Drag Veda, it is still a very good way to generate extra pressure by giving your field an overall 20k offensive power throughout the turn because you get that 10k power on your first swing and you, that retains until the second attack as well. So that's a 10k power to each attack there. And front row retire is actually very beneficial to yourself as well because it helps you generate extra attacks on the field and we'll get into that very soon but we'll talk about the divine skill first so divine skill auto from vanguard of course at the end of the battle that this unit attacked a grade three or greater unit if your opponent's damage zone has four or more cards and this unit attacked two or more times this turn counter blast one stand this unit it gets plus two drive until end of turn you can only use this once per game now the timing of it feels like a killing blow moment. You can't activate this ability until your opponent's at four damage, but it does give you that extra two drives back. And this would be also be a nice time to hit a Drag Veda because there is no way for you to use this ability first, but that requires a lot of pieces to sort of be in place. There's a lot of setup required there but the fact that you can get three vanguard attacks and you get the twin drive back on your third attack and also the fact that you don't have to discard anything the only thing that you have to do is retire your front row rear guards and we will get into the rear guards that will be on your field and that almost feels free so it it's a really solid deck it plays very simply it's attack attack get bigger attack 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 i'm very excited for this i'm just glad that we got a wind dragon for once because the lightning dragons and the flame dragons are great but just uh seeing the more feathery type of dragon is a breath of fresh air and if you guys haven't already seen the silver rare what i forgot what the other rarity is uh, this card just looks amazing and obviously hashtag now best girl so we're going to be building this deck right away as it comes out. <laughs> anyway, moving on to the support card. So we're done with the ride line. Let's take a look at the triple R support first. We have Dragrita Shura. I'm sorry, but I'm only interested in strong people. When this unit attacks Energy Blast 2, and this unit gets plus 5k until the end of that battle, choose one of your rear guards with a different name from this unit and it gets when this unit is retired from mirror, put this into hand until end of turn. So she lets you recycle your boulder axes, which retire themselves and let you draw. And basically, as soon as you get one boulder axe copy, if you have a Shura, you have an infinite amount, or at least whatever amount of boulder axes you want for the rest of the game. If for example, you don't pull any more out of your deck, that one boulder axe can be recycled throughout the entire game with Shura's ability. It's energy blast, two, and nothing else in the deck energy blasts except for the cyclers that we'll be getting. But in terms of the archetype, this is the only card that uses the energy blast resource. So you will have a lot of energy blast to be able to recycle whatever piece you have in the front row obviously she can't revive 
herself through this ability, but her second ability lets her do that anyway. When this unit is retired from rear by the ability of your grade 3 or greater vanguard with Varga in its card name, if your opponent's vanguard is grade 3 or greater, counterblast 1 and call this unit to rear, and it gets plus 10k until end of turn. So this is what I meant by you attack, you attack, you attack, you get bigger, and then you attack, and then you attack, and then you attack again. So if you have two Shuras in the front row, that's, that is granted three counter blast in one turn, but you do get all of those attacks back. So I don't think that that's the best way, but it definitely is a way to play out a turn. I'd see that being pretty useful, maybe on a persona ride kill turn at five damage, just being able to push with as many attacks as possible. And they also do get 10k upon recall. So just like a phoenix, she rises from the ashes or something like that a lot stronger so that is really good she is really really good i don't see her leaving the deck in future waves of support obviously but yeah really solid first wave of support cards um that's one thing that i've noticed with all the dz01 stuff all the stuff is pretty solid for first wave of support usually we kind of get slower clunkier archetype pieces in the beginning of a series but this has been really good in terms of keeping that pace with what we left off with in will dress and obviously the triple drive booster set so again shura really really good card next we have impale horn dragon the exploding soul calls forth a storm and turns it into lightning that pierces through enemies during the battle that this unit boosted, if you have a grade 3 or greater vanguard with Varga in its card name, this unit gets plus 5k. So, it's a 13k booster from the back, plain and simple. But if you have it behind your vanguard, it gets an extra 2k. So, when this unit boosts a grade 3 or greater vanguard with Varga in its card name, this unit gets plus 2k until the end of that battle. Then at the end of that battle, Soul Blast 1, retire this unit and draw a card. So, I did mention that you can use shura's ability to bring back your boulder axes you can definitely do that and you can also bring uh impale horn dragons back i don't know if you would want to do that very honestly i'd probably just keep it in the back as a 15k booster and then just have my draw power come through the boulder axe dragons but that's just how i feel about this ability so again very simple card double r uh, the single R support is a lot better in my opinion, but it is a 13 to 15k uh, booster. Alright, next, moving down the rarity ladder to single R with Obdurisi Glaive Dragon. Unyielding and indomitable, therefore the dragon will never kneel. Very cool. And this art looks really good too. I feel like this should have been the double R, and then I would have been okay with Impale Horn being a single R. It does feel single R-ish. First ability, from front row rear, continuous during your turn. If you do not have another front row rear guard with the same card name as this unit, this unit cannot be retired by card effects and gets plus 10k power. So, it's a 23k body in the front row. It does alleviate the need to have Shuras on the field, or at least it opens up your Shuras to be able to, to recycle your Impale Horn Dragons if you wanted to go that route. And very simple, it's just a big body. It doesn't get retired off of Varga, so you can keep it as a trigger dump for your triggers, obviously. And it also has boost. Here we have 13k boosters in the back, 10 to 20k bodies in the front. So we're looking at 25 to 28k lanes almost all the time. So you will be pulling a lot of cards out of your opponent's hand. And I'm all for it. It's really cool. I just love the aggro of this deck. And last but not least, we have the common support card for the ride line and it is blazing monk of raging flames kofu maybe it's an unnecessary care may the future of waves be filled with flames from rear 
or Guardian Circle. If you have a Grade 3 or Greater Vanguard with Varga in its card name, this unit gets 5k power and shield. So again, it's a 13k booster or more likely I'll be using it for its guard ability <coughs> uh, as a 10k shield. We are getting a lot more defensive pieces. I really appreciate that because ever since I started playing standard coming from V, the one thing that I hated the most was the shield change to grade ones. I think they should have stayed at 10k just because triggers do so much. It doesn't feel great to have seven cards in your hand all being grade ones that are in PGs and only having 35k shields for a turn. So it's nice to have these beefier guardians that have easy requirements. It'll make the game a lot more interactive instead of you just not being able to guard a 15 to 18k attack or a 20k attack with something other than a 10k drop trigger. I just really like um, 10k guard cards. But yeah, that is it for this first impressions in terms of optimal field setup if you are digging for pieces i would definitely have boulder axe and ashura so that you can recycle the boulder axe get the shura back to swing a nice swing after the vanguard again that does cost more counter blast throughout the turn but it doesn't seem like any of the other cards use any resources anyway so it really depends on how well you are able to manage your resources throughout the game moving into the mid game you could have obduracy glaive out obduracy glaive in one lane and then shora on the other lane just again to get that fifth attack it makes running front triggers a lot more worth it because just eyeballing optimal field setup for the mid game I do prefer the Obduracy Glaive Dragon just because it is 23k. It is a lot more of an imposing number than Boulder Axe can get on its own. So Shura in one lane, Obduracy Glaive in another lane, attack with Shura, attack with Dragress, retire the Shura, call it back with its own ability, give it an extra 10k, and then pump your lanes with potential drive check triggers and swing with your lanes after that i do like fronts i do like making the front row very large so that is just how i'm looking at it right now and then on kill turns so you have the two shuras you attack with one attack with the second attack with varga counter blast one to retire the two call them back out with their own abilities and then you have three more attacks after that you have the restanding Varga with no drive checks, and then you have the two Shuras that get an extra 10k on respawn, basically. So, yeah, those are just the initial sort of observations that I've made so far. If you guys have more input on it, I'd love to hear it. I really want to play this deck just, just for the grade 3, just because it looks so cool. And yeah, that is it. You guys, thank you so much for watching. I am sorry that this video took so long to get out. I've just been so busy with, um, with work and life. And yeah, I am doing my best to make sure that I keep up to date with the decks that I want to break down or at least to look at. And as for the games, I have been doing so much, so many uh, practice games and everything. But I just, again, haven't had the time to really sit down and edit anything right away. I apologize for all of the waiting. I will have a bunch of standard and B premium stuff coming out soon, as soon as I can sit down and really cut through all of the video that I have recorded, I will get it out. All, I will get it all out to you guys. But again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your patience. And I will catch you in the next one.